Alright, here's all of the notes. I'm going to try to do this in order. Alright, in the middle we got Steven and Teresa. It starts on the 31st after she leaves the Avery's residence. She's followed by Bobby, Scott, or Mike. They end up on Cuss Road. That's the crime scene. That's where they left their body before they burned her. They follow her on the Cuss Road. They kill her. They leave her there. They exit through the quarry to Jambo Creek Road. Take that to Highway 147 where Blaine on a school bus spots Bobby driving Teresa's car turning onto Highway 147 heading towards Scott's trailer. Behind him is either Mike Osmerson driving the Blazer or it's Scott Tadich. If it's Mike, that would explain why Scott said he's seen Bobby's Blazer. He didn't see Bobby. He's seen his Blazer driving on 147 towards his property. He wouldn't know Teresa's car. So Teresa had already drove him past Scott. The bus has already gone past Jambo Creek Road. So when Mike or Scott drive right onto 147, picks Bobby up at the Two Rivers Dam where they leave the car. They go back to the Dassey's house. They're planning... How are they, like, what the fuck are they going to do? What are we going to do? Meanwhile, Barb hears about the deer, mentions it to Bobby. They go get it. So they're going to use this deer to cover up them butchering up Teresa. They butcher up the deer and everything. They start burning parts of the deer they're not going to use in the burn barrel. Then they go and get Teresa from the woods where they left her on Cuss Road. They bring her in the garage. They don't clean up the deer. They butcher her up. They start burning her in the burn barrel. Sometimes between this, Brendan comes upon them either cutting her up or burning her body. They threaten him. They tell him what happened. They tell him everything. This is where they get his fucking story from. They try burning her body. But it doesn't burn all the way. So then they take. The bones. To Scott's work. They tell Scott that it's the deer bones. So he doesn't think anything of it and lets them do it themselves. It takes two people. It's either Scott and Bobby doing this or Bobby and Mike doing this. Then again, if Mike O was at work on October 31st till 4 p.m. or even 3 p.m., he's not a suspect. That makes it Scott and Bobby. So, they get rid of her body. They think everything's in the clear. October 3rd, or no, November 3rd, I'm sorry. Stephen mentions to Bobby, when he's talking to Blaine and them, that the cops were there looking for Teresa. Barb asks Stephen to remove the trailer hitch from her car. He does that. He reopens his cut. He asks Bobby and Blaine if they want to come to Menards. 
but he's got to go inside and wrap his finger up. Bobby says, no, he has something to do. I bet you he sure does. So Blaine, Stephen, and Earl, or it might even have been Chucky. I think it was Chucky. Chucky, they leave to go to Menards. Meanwhile, before that, Stephen goes in the south door of his trailer, goes in the bathroom. After parking his car, he bleeds in his car on the steering wheel, on the gear shift, on the door handle. He bleeds on the trailer of his, to the door of his trailer. He drops some blood on the floor in the bathroom, and he bleeds all over his sink. He just wipes the blood off, probably with, some, with towel, because he's a mechanic, and he just bandages up with some duct tape. Walks out the door, leaves, goes to Menards. They see taillights or headlights down by his trailer. That was probably Bobby leaving. Driving, he probably drove past his trailer, drove across the field, drove through the deer camp, and took the same way he took Sharice's car the first night, all the way back to where her car is, and he planted the blood. He gets back, thinks everything's cool. The next night, this is where Colborne and Link come into this shit. Colborne hears about the car down by the river at the gas station by the truck driver. Colborne is off of work. You know, he's one of them cops. He probably wears his uniform every single day because you never know when you're going to get a call. You might have to be back up. And I'm sure there's nothing really happens around that town. But he investigates. He finds the car. Calls Ryan. He's already talked to Ryan. They investigated everybody in the family first. Before they even talked to Stephen. Colburn was the first one to talk to Stephen anyways. Talked to him right at his mom's house. Right on the 31st. So. He gets a hold of Ryan. Him and Ryan. They move the car onto Avery's. They wipe all their prints off of the car. Steering wheel, gear shift, all that. But they leave the blood. Why? Or they didn't see the blood because it was dark out, right? They wipe all the traces of Bobby being in that car when they cleaned all the evidence from them being in there off. That's why they didn't find no prints inside the car. They cleaned them all themselves. And Ryan, he's got scratches all over his hands. Everybody brings that up. That happened when they were covering the car. If you look in the pictures, there's bushes all around the side of the car. You would have got scratched up. It's dark out. You're panicking. You're in a hurry. So then they leave. Colborn keeps the key. Gives it to Link. What did Link and them do? They go to Avery's. They drop the key in his room. I probably missed up Pam Stern. She's responsible for finding the car. And if you can see on my list how I determined everything, every little piece of this is a puzzle. And if you put it together, maybe you'll come to the determination I did. Steven's innocent. 